We're now going to look at the water vascular system that's inside of a sea star. So we'll start with the mouth. So again, the mouth would be dead center here, uh, the middle of the animal, which of course is also on the uh, oral side here on the bottom side of the sea star. But we're looking now kind of down towards its mouth. So that would be the mouth area. And unfortunately, this one has some broken teeth. So to actually answer the teeth question in your lab, you're going to want to refer to a picture that is on uh, my Moodle page. So the other thing we have is uh, we'll start with the beginning of where water flows into the system. So I'm going to angle my little sea star. So we start with this flat disc on the top, which is called the magipori. And there is a pore in the center, and that is where they can draw water in from the outside world. And when that water comes in, that water is going to go down this slightly yellow orangish colored tube here. And that tube brings the water in from the outer world down into the body. And then that tube fuses with a circular tube that runs water all the way around the central disc region. And that is known as the ring canal. Now the ring canal can move water down the middle of each arm and the water canal that would be right here is known as the radial canal. Radial meaning of course radiates outward from a central point. So as the water comes down the radial canal it can then go out in numerous little side directions through hundreds, hundreds of tiny little lateral canals and the lateral canals will go down this side as well as the opposite side in both directions from that radial canal dead center. Now once the water goes down the lateral canal, it's going to go into what look like these tiny little round fleshy bulbs, which are called ampullae. So the ampullae are kind of like, think of it like a balloon that can swell with water, and then it can contract. And when it contracts, it will force all the water that was in that little ampulla bulb to the other side of the animal to these structures sitting in the ambulacral groove, which are known as the tube feet. And specifically, we call this area of the tube foot the cylinder portion. Cylinder because it looks cylindrical in shape or long and round. Uh, and it has a sucker at the end of each of these. So this is how the animal actually moves. They're going to take water from the outside world, move it through that canal system, and then use it to fill these cylinders and as they fill, they're going to swell and they're going to elongate to the point that they will go beyond the body and they can use that sucker to attach to a surface. So they can actually swell the cylinder and attach to a surface and create suction. And then with muscle contraction, they can swing the little uh, and bend and flex that little tube foot and then release. So they can swing them forward, attach, swing them backwards and release and that creates a walking motion. The last thing in the water system is dead center here in the middle of the ring canal and what it is is little organ swellings that would be found on the inside region of this ring canal. And what those Tiedemann bodies do is they make amoebocytes and they place those amoebocytes into the water vascular system. So the question in your lab is going to ask, then what purpose is it serving? And I want you to figure that out. Also, what I've done here, which it mentioned to do in the lab, is I've taken a scalpel. And so you can see on this side are all those little fleshy bumps we call ampulla. And then we have, on the other side, I've scraped them off. And when I've scraped them off, you can see the lines now in the endoskeleton, which in between the lines would be the lateral canals of water flow. And you can see these repetitive openings, and it's a row of two of them, dot, 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 just kind of going down, one, two, one, two, one, two. And what those holes represent is the area where the ampulla bulb sat and the hole in the endoskeleton that allowed the tube foot and the ampulla to go through the body and still be directly attached to the outside apparatus known as the cylinder of the tube foot. So if we know that these little holes represent the location of ampulla inside and tube feet outside, we can look at, for instance, the shell of 
a sea urchin and we can see that they have five rows of these kind of dotted line patterns and then when we look on the inside we can see again a pattern of two two dot ho 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 going down the inside of the endoskeleton which means when this animal was alive the ampulla bulbs were actually lining the inside of those holes and what would have been extending out of the holes on the outside of this sea urchin would have been the tube feet. All right, that's it. Best of luck.